here at an undisclosed location. I'm here with Phil Schreier, National Farms Museum Senior Curator. Phil, uh, we're surrounded by treasures from Sagamore Hill, from Teddy Roosevelt's home. Tell us how we got there from here and what do we have this week? Thanks, John. Uh, well, the, uh, the National Park Service uh, has closed Sagamore Hill, Theodore Roosevelt's family home on Oyster Bay, Long Island. Uh, for about a period of three to four years to renovate it, to uh, climate control the house so that these uh, trappings of an icon, as we're calling them, uh, will have life well past current generations. Uh, they kindly asked us if we'd be willing to store some items so that the public could still visit with some of these wonderful uh, I, you know, artifacts from Theodore's life. Sure, why not? I'm sure you didn't mind. No, we <laughs> took a truck real quick. Uh, we asked for a lot of things, and they were very generous with us. Wow. Uh, the, uh, the only thing we asked for we didn't get was the uh, Bronco Buster Bronze uh, by Frederick Remington that the mm -hmm. Rough Rider Regiment, the first U.S. Cav, gave to Theodore as a token of their esteem. And, uh, of course, that was the first thing I asked for. And they said, well, the Metropolitan Museum of Art got that one. So, oh, come uh, on. All right, we'll give them that one. Yeah. One, yeah. But, but we have this. What do we, we have, have here? We have this. this <laughs> and and uh, we have uh, 14 guns. Wow. Uh, now, for the folks at home to understand, there are a lot of firearms in Theodore Roosevelt's collection at Sagamore Hill. His eldest son, Theodore Roosevelt Jr., Medal of Honor, D-Day, Utah Beach, in 1944, uh, built his own home called Old Orchard uh, in the mid-30s, right behind his father's house mm -hmm. uh, where his widowed mother was living uh, in the 1930s. That house is the official visitor center and museum. There are a lot of guns on display there. We got everything else that wasn't on current exhibit. So we, there's some real treasures. Yes. And this 1886 Winchester is one of them. Uh, it is absolutely gorgeous uh, in keeping with everything that Theodore uh, did just about it has every special feature you could almost order off of a Winchester rifle at the time I said he did nothing ordinary no everything was done as the Theodore the TR way that's right uh, this is a uh, a beautiful uh, a button mag uh, half round half octagon uh, 1886 pistol grip, hand checkered foreign, select, choice select wood. I mean, it looks mm, like beautiful. a beautiful sun, sunrise there. Yeah. Um, Monte Carlo style raised cheek piece. Uh, you have the uh, flat uh, flat metal uh, butt stock to the gun, shotgun butt is what they call it. Uh, and just the most resplendent uh, color case heart mm -hmm. uh, on the gun. And a lot of people would say, well, that gun looks too new, too fine to have actually been used by the president. It had been a gun that he, he liked. Uh, it should have some wear because we know that the president loved to shoot his gun. Uh, took a bunch of them to Africa, a bunch to the, the Brazilian wilderness, numerous hunting trips all over the North American continent. And to that, I would say, you're absolutely right. It does look brand new. And there's a reason why it looks brand new, because when we went to Winchester uh, Records, our friends at the Cody Firearms Museum of the Buffalo Bill Historic Center were very kind in looking up the serial number for us. And they report that this gun went back from Roosevelt to Winchester, not once, not twice, five separate occasions. Uh, wow. The, yeah, exactly. He did use this fire. <laughs> <laughs> he sent his gun back to Winchester for refinish, refit, uh, refreshing five different times wow. over the course of his life. This was definitely a gun <laughs> that he enjoyed, that he liked using, and that he, uh, he wanted to keep in, in, in great condition throughout his life. It's a 4590. Uh, uh, Winchester Centerfire, uh, 1886. Uh, this is good for any type of game in all of North America. Wow, that is beautiful. Tell us, Phil, how we can see these treasures on display here 
well, temporarily for a few years anyway, at the National Fire Museum. <laughs> well, John, beginning in uh, in mid-May to, to uh, early June 2012, Theodore Roosevelt, Trappings of an Icon, the Oval Office of the Summer White House will be on exhibit at the National Fire Museum along with oh, just 3,000 other guns that we have, Hollywood guns, the, uh, the Peterson Gallery. Uh, that's on display seven days a week from 9.30 to 5 at the uh, museum in Fairfax, Virginia, the intersection of Interstate 66 and US 50. If you can't hit us off the uh, interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. Phil, thank you so much for sharing another treasure from the Teddy Roosevelt series. I'm looking forward to the next one next week on the Curator's Corner. Thank you, John. We appreciate it.